G'day, Aussie Ben. Now, just a few last concepts to go through. And uh, this first concept has got to do with the, the game space that we're playing in. Everything's been very simple here at the moment in terms of just all fitting nicely onto this playing stage. But a game should naturally be much larger than that. So, uh, for example, if I start to move these out, I'll just turn my grid on. That's a much larger game space that we're playing with there. And so an issue that we've got straight away, if I go into preview for that, is that the camera is actually fixed to one point at the moment, which is going to be a very easy thing to correct or change. And this is actually probably something that you would want to show the students early on in the piece. And there's our problem. So I'd like to get the camera to follow us on screen. In our event editor, what we're going to do is add a new event that will deal with that problem. So let me think. We're looking for an option here at the beginning of the scene. Whoops, slip there. I'll just try that again. At the beginning of the scene, so when the scene begins, there'll be an option here about cameras. Center the camera on an object. Which object? The hero. Don't worry about changing any of these. Add and I'll give that a quick try. So this should correct the problem, but it will actually also introduce a new problem. Or I didn't correct the problem, so I've goofed up there somewhere. Let me just check that out. So what we'll check is back in the events editor, I'll just take that out and try again. Pretty sure this will work this time. But once again, we'll, presuming it works, we'll actually have created a new problem. There we go, so that's nice. But notice that our loot, our score, our heads up display moves off screen. Now, there's exceptionally good support for this product via their forums that they have. And this was a question that I asked about how could I have a layer that follows the player as the player moves. Now, as it currently stands, there is no such feature built into the web-based version of uh, GDEV app. But they have a desktop version of this as well, which has got a lot more features. And one of the features is uh, to be able to create layers. So uh, the good people at GDEV app went ahead and actually created me a, a bit of a template game that could be used that actually has layers in there that I can modify as I like. So to show you how you would use that, and this is what you should do before you create any real game, because you can't add this after the fact. Well, not easily, anyhow. So I'm going to copy layers and my great game. Create the game. And there we go, my great game. And I'll load that up. So currently I'm in my game. Now I'm in my great game. The scene editor looks like this. So I'll just quickly test that out. So what we're looking for is the score being held in a stationary position on the screen. 
and following. And there you go. So don't worry about the fact that there's no animation or anything like that. That wasn't the purpose of this template. The purpose was to give us some extra layers. So what you would do is you would uh, clean all this up. You'd delete uh, all of the objects that are there before you get started and uh, create your own. But what you want to have a look at is what they've done here for you. So they've got a bit of a comment here explaining how things work and they've set up a particular event that says at the beginning of the scene put score on layer 2 and that's pretty much it. All these other bits and pieces here I actually don't need. I I'd create these myself. So all of those are ultimately unnecessary for me, but they were good for testing purposes. So I'll delete those. Now that means now that I can't move my uh, character either. I would leave that there. That's associated to this. And if you remember back to the earlier tutorial, that will make sense. But I can, yeah, just go ahead, get rid of all these bits and pieces that I don't want. And if I like to even get rid of them from here, so I can click on that and delete the object. And that's a nice fast way to get rid of it off the scene. Likewise, I don't want to use that player, delete the object. Oops. And from there, I can save that. And I've got the bare bones of it there. So back at home now, when I want to start creating my great game, I've got that ready to roll. So you'll need to use that as your starting template for your game, presuming you want to do some sort of heads up display. So I'll just load back up the My Great Game. There's of course heaps more information to go through, but that's a really good starting point. As a student, what can then happen is that they can literally just go with pencil and paper and get a bit of grid paper and they can start to block out what they want their level to look like. Uh, the above ground areas, the caverns underneath, uh, how long it is, the, the jumps that have got to be made, where the treasures are, where the monsters are. They can deal with the complexities of... Uh, adding values to scores and things like that later on but now they've got more than enough information to go ahead and do some really good level design. So the next best step apart from actually going through and doing some level design is to go ahead and create a new game and this time base it on the platformer template that's already there for you. The idea being you can actually learn quite a bit from that now that you know the basics. So if I go into my scene editor, uh, the level itself is there, and that's all very interesting. But more importantly, after I play through that level, the events viewer is really want to, where I want to concentrate on. And there's lots of tricky things here, uh, things that I haven't spoken about yet, but are really interesting to have a look at to see how some special effects have been achieved and movements been achieved and things like that. And, and some of them are quite uh, complex too, so uh, your learners will need support for that. But now's a good time after completing this first series of tutorials to uh, have a look at a slightly more polished or completed level and see how some of the fancy bits were done. So I'll continue on later on in the piece and do another series of videos that will deal with more intermediate concepts to create a more full featured game. I hope that you've got something out of this and I hope that if you're an educator that it inspires you enough to either through your school or through your community education locations to host some uh, introductory game development classes using this product. It is really great. There's, there's uh, the, the pictures and everything that are used might look cutesy, but there's nothing cut down about this. This is proper game development and it's teaching some really good core concepts on level design and, and even programming. And it's easy enough to grasp that it doesn't discourage people and it will encourage them to learn more. So I hope you can do some good stuff with that.